Take it away, Coach. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I appreciate all of you that are here. I, I I know that this is a very difficult time and a trying time, and but we're going to somehow weather through all of this. Uh, in the meantime, I just really want to um, thank our nurses and our doctors for allowing us to uh, to participate. It, it is with the uh, the confidence of the medical people that uh, we proceed. And uh, it, it's been outstanding, truly outstanding. And it's, and it's scary, you know, with all the things that are going on. But I have ultimate confidence in our medical uh, staff. In the meantime, I just want to give a big shout out to uh, Coach Yano and, uh, and, and, and the gifts that he's given us. And we're talking about the chop chop and knowing that uh, we're all about the chop. And uh, he's going to, I'm so happy that, that he's here. I can tell you that, um, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's just like where he should have been. And, and this is great. Um, and in the meantime, he has a game with um, uh, Illinois, I think, tomorrow. And so let's, let's all cheer for him. And then uh, Coach Peichel has done an outstanding job. He has just, I mean, just blown the socks off of everybody. And, uh, and the players are practicing hard. And they, uh, you know, are, I want to congratulate them because they um, are in the top 24. And, uh, and that's been some time, as you know, uh, that we have uh, our Rutgers basketball team uh, in the top 24. But it's not without uh, us knowing that they've worked extremely hard. The players are together. And uh, it's going to be a special year going forward. Yeah. Now, what, what am I talking about? Um, we've got seven freshmen, right? Seven freshmen. And uh, I, I, it, it's the most beautiful arrangement of freshmen because they are not scared. And they don't know what they don't know. Uh, and, and so I, I look at them and I think, I remember I, I, uh, Tasha Pointer and I were talking the other night and, uh, and I asked her, I, I remember that uh, when they were all at my house and, and they announced who Rutgers was going to play and, uh, and it happens to be, it happened to have been Tennessee and she and the rest of the freshmen were like, yeah, 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 we're so glad, that's great to play at Tennessee. And me and my assistant looked at her and like, God darn, it's just the number one team in the country. What are you talking about? But uh, but that's beautiful, and that's that's the mindset, really and truly. That's the mindset of our freshmen, and um, that's along with uh, Arella Durantes, who has come back. He's, she's come back with a uh, a vengeance. It, her mindset is that you know, like uh, she wants to be the best that there there possibly can be. Uh, she's one of only six uh, records players that have had average uh, double digit scoring. Uh, and um, rebounding, I mean, it's it's amazing. And she's come back to, as what she would say, unfinished business. Um, and so, you know, she's she's gotten in shape. She worked hard anyway. Uh, but that, along with um, Takia Mack, who is uh, the defensive player of the year, and um, I believe that Mayel Giles, believe me, she she's gonna she's gonna do a heck of a lot uh, this year. A lot of scoring. And um, and then of course I, I know that uh, Zipporah Broughton. I think that she has to be the highlight uh, for me right now because um, I look at her every day and I'm like stunned uh, with the way that she has approached the year. I I thought that she was kind of took things in a, in a kind of light sort of way, uh, but she is real serious about how she plays the game. Uh, she's extremely patient. Uh, she's helped and monitored and. And uh, guided um, uh, Diamond, Diamond, um, Diamond. They, she she's just done a, a great job, and and she knows that uh, we need every last one of those freshmen to play. And uh, they're anxious and excited. In fact, um, something happened uh, a couple months ago, and uh, I think the players thought that I was saying that we were going to cancel the the season. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, one of our players started to cry, and uh, and I looked around, and and the mother, you know, kept rubbing the player's back, and so she said, "Yeah, did, did you start? Did you decide that we're not going to play this year?" And I said, "Oh no, 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 that's that's not the case." So 
No, they're all they're all anxious, and I'm I'm anxious, and we're we're anxious to get started. All right, we'll go to the group for questions. Let's start off with James Cratch from Starlight. Hey, Vivian, how are you? I'm good. How about you? I'm good. Uh, so, two parter, I guess. One, how has the program kind of handled the virus? And the second thing is, I know you're supposed to play on the 25th. There's no game yet. When do you actually think you guys will get on the court? You know, I, you know what? It, it might sound strange for me to say that, but I, I wish I knew. I, I don't know. But, but the, to tell you the truth, we, um, we are supposed to have games. Um, but so many things have been happening. But our, our staff, the medical staff, uh, Pat, um, Pat and Sarah have been doing a phenomenal job of preparing us and getting the best medical care that there can possibly be and, uh, and giving us the opportunity to compete at the highest level. So uh, it's just what is else is going on in this world. And that's where uh, all of us are shaking our heads and don't know what's going on. But um, supposedly, supposedly, we're supposed to be playing, I think, around the 24th or 25th. I, I don't, don't pay attention to that so much because um, I kind of am always so focused on when that we play uh, and more important that, that I feel that we're ready to play. And quite honestly, I never feel that we're ready to play. So, you know, we'll, 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 we'll come around. We'll, we, will, we will make it. We'll go to the next question. We'll go to Ralph Bidnarchik or uh, radio play by play. You can unmute Ralph. Good morning, coach. Uh, with Arella and everything she's achieved, and we know that she doesn't, no one has to motivate her, but uh, where have you and the coaching staff uh, perhaps uh, challenged her in any aspect, uh, any finite aspect of her game? Uh, to take her to the level that she wants to take herself? Where have you guys challenged her, uh, you, you know, to step forward up for 2021? Yeah, you know, uh, with that note, um, she wants to, to be more consistent in the long ball. Uh, she's always been a, 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 um, an outstanding rebounder, uh, push tempo, uh, and definitely uh, has been a key on their, our, 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 our 55 defense. So she is going to uh, to shoot the the, the, the three pointer uh, a little bit more than what she has done already, and of course she's looking at um, you know the, the many players that we've had in the league. I mean we've we've had so many players that have been playing uh, in the league, and, and I appreciate the fact that she knows that um, that she is going to present and give give to everybody. Uh, what it means to be a Scarlet Knight. And when we are looking at uh, Scarlet Knights that have been playing 10 years in the league, you know, in fact, you know that uh, Benai Zelani uh, was uh, 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 most improved player, and then it was followed by Kalia Copper, you know, in the uh, WNBA. And so uh, I think that Arella joining that group uh, is just going to add to the, uh, the, 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 the re resumes of the, many of the players that we've already had. Coach, I think I'm jumping in here now to, to take the driver's seat from Matt. He's going to hop over with the players. So we'll take our next question from Dom Savino. Okay. Hey, Coach. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Good. Good. Can't complain. Uh, I have a question about the freshmen. Uh, you mentioned you have a huge freshman class this year. Just uh, generally, how have they how have they done getting acclimated to school? Um, what's your impressions of them in the first uh, first few months of their first season? You know what? Let me say this. I appreciate the fact that they they're together. They they stick together. That's one. Uh, <laughs> in fact, I I, I just it, it made made me recall several things. Um, but they stick together. They adapt, and they have adapted to um, to this this COVID situation, and more importantly, you know, the virtual classrooms and the whole thing. Um, do they like it? They're, they're not crazy about it. But you know, I, I feel bad for everybody uh, that has been um, sequestered 
you know, because, because that's the way it is now, you know, and, uh, and, and they in particular have got to be restricted to so many things. And, and it's unfair, you know, it seems to me that you would love to play basketball or football or whatever, play the sports and, and get out in the open and, and just play. But, um, that's, that's not the case, but she, um, all of them play, all of them are doing that. But I think that, uh, that's better done, you know, with the help of the upperclassmen. And certainly I, I would even say, uh, with Zipporah because she, uh, she's, she's our leader in, in, the, in the, the, on the academic side. She truly is, uh, really focused on, uh, in terms of what she needs to do. Coach, we're going to take our next question from Chris Eisman. Vivian, how do you think the way that the last season ended with obviously the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament uh, taken away from them, how do you think that has sort of impacted the way that the players have come back this year and their, and their drive and motivation to continue what they started last year? You, you know, I wish we could bring them all back. You know, like you, you have K.K. Sounders who didn't ha have an opportunity to play. You know, and, and last year she was, you know, uh, injured, so she didn't get a chance to play last year. And so it, it's just uh, hurtful that uh, some of the players just did not get a chance. You know, it's like, you know, when you get ready to go to the prom and, uh, and they canceled the prom, you know, or you get ready to graduate and they, and they canceled it. And so uh, I feel bad for all of our young people. And I guess this world that we're living in today uh, is, is telling us that we need to recognize that some of the touching things, like one of the things I, I personally um, just resent, but but I know that it's the only way we can do things is that um, we can't touch them, you know, like, no, there's, there's no touching, there's just no encouragement, you know, uh, because I, I, I like to hug my players and touch them, and yet, you know, we, we stand... Uh, you know, at a, at a distance, and, you know, we see a, see a cheer, but it seems, seems so cold, you know, it seems so cold, and so, you, you, and, and they want, they, they, they want to, to just be there, you know, and uh, they, it's a different day, you know, it's a different day, but uh, hopefully, we're all rid of this, and everybody can hug, and be friends, be good again, and we can uh, enjoy sports as we once did. But um, but I, I admire the players because they're, they're dealing dealing with quite a bit. You know, can you imagine being in a dorm and then you can't even go over and, and visit your teammates? I mean, you know, think about that. Think about that. Hmm. We're going to go to Alexander Carminati for the next question. Hi, Coach. Alex Carbonati with the, with the Daily Targum here. Um, overall, when it comes to entering your 26th season as the head coach for this Scarlet Knights team, because of the pandemic and everything that's going on, are there any certain uh, precautions, any certain type of uh, style that, that, that you're looking to implement into this new season coming up as it's coming up very soon? Yeah, uh, it would be nice if we could, if we could do that, but... Um tell you the truth we we started relatively late um and to tell you we 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 not in the shape that we need to be in yet just yet honestly uh we're just not you know we're, we're trying we're trying uh but 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 we're not i mean we i think that we will we'll meet the deadline when we when we get ready to play and we'll have enough people that are in the shape that they need to be so that we can go forward with this. But honestly, um, that, that, that whole thing, that whole thing, see, because I don't know if you realize it, but you realize that, um, when the players were home during the summer, they couldn't practice. They couldn't practice. That's, I mean, it's just like they they couldn't practice. And so, so many of them came back to school. In fact, one of the more difficult situations that I, I've been involved with is that my, my assistant coach would say, okay, coach, just remember this is really not um, January. This is, I mean, this is really um, uh, not the time of year that you think it is. Um, 
but it's like two months later. We, it's like I, you know, I, I'm I'm a, I'm trying to adjust to the the time. And here's what I'm saying: I get very upset because I have written every pr practice, and I am very sh sure about exactly where we need to be at a very specific time in our season. And so that's kind of crazy, like, okay. And so it, it, we want to peel that back because um, we're, we didn't have a summer. So I'm reminded that, okay, that wasn't the summer. This is really our summer, like in, um, in, in, in December, I mean, in um, September, that's really beginning our summer. And so, uh, and, and maybe as anxious I am, as I am always anyway, I'm like, okay, wait a minute, hold up. We're behind. Hold we got to go forward. But, you know, uh, I'm assured that we are not, and we're, we're picking up things and learning a lot. And it's especially with when you have uh, seven freshmen, seven freshmen, and, um, but they're uh, seven joyful freshmen that are learning a lot and will be fine uh, in, in the time to come. Our next question is from Chris Nowalski. Hey, Coach. Uh, you mentioned Arella kind of had unfinished business. Um, you know, how impactful was it to get her back this season? <laughs> Arella, uh, Arella was not happy, uh, as you could you could tell. Probably she is driven, just dri driven, 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 driven to um, flat out get it done. I think that uh, the Big Ten coaches may have voted uh, for the best players uh, or the, um, the scoring leaders in the Big Ten, but it was before our game against Iowa. <clears throat> and that was unfair because in that game against Iowa, that was the deciding factor right there. And Arella was truly, you know, the Big Ten scoring leader. But she didn't get that honor of, of that. You know what I mean? So, uh, it's okay. She's um, she's driven. And we don't always get what we want or that we feel that we we deserve. But as, as we've shared with her, um, because she's such a great competitor, she wouldn't walk away from that. She's going to, you know, she's going to march in here and, and she's going to, Assume that uh, a lot of things have got to happen, and she knows the first uh, thing that that we need uh, from her is we need her leadership, and we need her scoring, and we need her defense, and we need her be the, the outstanding uh, player that that she has always been, because she can't do it by herself. You know, we've got to chip in and get some things done ourselves. And uh, I'm I'm really happy the the freshman the freshman. They're, they're they're going to they're going to make an impact. They really truly are a tremendous impact, and we're, we're just waiting waiting for that. Next question is from Tim Catafalo. Hey, Coach, how you doing? I hope you're well. Uh, two quick Thank questions. You. Two quick questions for you. I know that you had kind of mentioned and talked about how the players really can't interact that much. So I know the freshmen coming in, they have a little bit of a challenge uh, mixing with some of the players that are already on the team. So how have you been able to combat that with there being so much, uh, I guess, physical distance between the players and not having as much time to bond with each other? You know, I'm glad you said that. And, and it's very true. It's, it's very, it's, this, this is real different. I think, I think that we're going to have the, we're going to see the, um, the effects of the distancing that that we have got to do uh, with a lot of the a lot of our young people, a, a lot of our young people, you know, because because it, it is the way that it is. Um, but no, you can't bond quite this, you know, this in the same way. You know, uh, they can't have parties in the same way, you know, young people, you know, want to get together and, and, and then plus there's no, no one on campus. So, you know, like I, I feel bad, I feel bad for them. And, you know, and, and, and you would think that, you know, if, when you're going into, especially your senior year that, you know, you're used to the, the crowds and people cheering and, and because, I mean, and that's the reason why I think that initially LeBron James was saying, no, 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 I don't want to play. Because if we don't have the crowds, you know, he, he didn't want to play. 
Um, but we have no choice in this situation. But, uh, you know, I, I was walking um, with Brian as we came um, off the, um, the, uh, the, the arena and walked in. And they were saying, okay, this is where everybody's going to sit. That's really strange. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to adjust. I'm going to adjust, but golly. You know, but, uh, yeah, that it is what it is. And um, we're going to have to, all that, I mean, I, oh, this is, this is, this is going to be different, 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 different. Yeah. We're good. We're good. We're going to go to Howard Magdal with the next question. I'm sorry. Next question is from Howard. Howard, oh. okay. Hey, hey, coach. Good to chat with you. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. Uh, uh, always a pleasure. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Arella's path from here to the WNBA draft specifically. And she comes to the return uh, to you already north of 2% steal percentage, 3% block percentage. So, you know, defensively, she's doing so much of what you want her to do at the next level. She also obviously dramatically increased her three-point percentage up near 38.5%. Mm -hmm. What, if anything, do you see as what she needs to add between now and when her name gets called next year to get to where she should be? And do you think she has a chance to be the first name called next year? Uh, she has a chance. It's, uh, oh, that, that's interesting, and it's a loaded question. Um, she could be the first name, but I, I hate, hesitate to put that on her because I don't want her to feel bad if if it if it wasn't, you know, because we we've had Olympians, you 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 know that, you know, with with the Cappy Bond extra or um, Essence Carsons or Matias Javon, those those players, you know, and um, uh, Arella is every bit as good as all of them, and in fact, with that said, uh, Arella, uh, you know, has a higher scoring average. Uh, than uh, than uh, than all of them, uh, but but with that said, what does she need to do? She needs to be consistent because I'm sure that they're going to, especially if she's being drafted to a team that is, has already been successful, then they're going to look for her to yes increase her three point shooting, yes play some great defense, and they know that they're going to get a great defensive player on that, and she's bright, she's extremely bright on that side of it. But she's got to, um, she's got to, uh, I think that if she would have a little bit more assists, I think that she can do a better job of assisting. And, and, and you'll see this coming up. For example, she, um, Diamond, Diamond, Diamond Johnson is a an outstanding player. I think that you may have seen that she was one of the few players that were invited to the um, uh, Allen Iverson, the men's men's team, right? So, but the beautiful thing about Diamond as well as uh, Arella is that they're not competing uh, against each other. They're competing to play with each other. And uh, Arella, what does she need to do? She needs to Come up with, fill every stat line, do a better job of uh, of her turnovers to assist, you know. Uh, and, but I don't think that she is going to have nearly as many turnovers because uh, she's going to be able to put the ball in other people's hands that, you know, can take the pressure off of her. And so uh, we're going to play her sometimes as a point guard. Uh, and we did a few times last year. We'll play her sometimes as a point guard and we'll play her as a two and a three because she's got a nice nice size to be able to do just that. But um, we expect that she's going to be a high draft choice. And, in fact, I, um, they called her and were saying to her that she could have been drafted, I think, third or fourth or second second or third uh, last year if she had gone out, you know, if she had gone into the uh, WNBA. Um, so, so we're glad that she's back with us. Thanks, Coach. Coach, we're going to take a couple more here. We're going to go to uh, Charles Hellman. Good, good afternoon, Coach. I hope you can hear me. Yeah, where are you? I'm in, <laughs> I'm in Minnesota, as always. 
Oh, okay, okay. How have you been? I hope everything is safe for you and your family. Yeah, me, me, and you too. Thank you. Thank Congratulations you. to your milestones and your Hall of Fame. I want to ask you just a simple question, a non-basketball question. The SEC has added a, a seventh black female coach with the Kentucky promoting the interim coach to Kentucky yesterday, uh, and there seemed to be a lot of seemed to be a, a number of black females being hired over the off season as head coaches, but we still doesn't have a whole lot more. You've already speak on that subject about. Moving, you know, being able to do that. Uh, could you express your opinion on that a little bit? Yeah. Well, can you can you help me? Um, can you help me for a second? Uh, you said the SEC has a, a lot of black females. They have seven now. Okay. Okay. And that's where when uh, the coach from Kentucky. Right. Uh, yes. When the coach from Kentucky uh, is no longer coaching, Kyra Alzi, who used to play at. Um, Tennessee, uh -huh. yeah, and then you know, and as, as you may know, um, uh, he was a, 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 an assistant coach at Tennessee as well, and so he he got Kara, and then I understand that um, that uh, he's gotten sick or had an accident of sorts, and now he is no longer, you know, no longer um, coaching. So that that goes back to Kara. Um, but, um, yes, it, 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 it's quite a few, but now are you asking me, what do I think about that? Just in terms of just the growing number of black females being hired as coaches, it seemed like a little this off season, but there's still not a, not that many more. Well, you know, I think, I think, I think that's, that's happening in the, um, it's, that's happening in the, uh, SEC. You know, it's kind of interesting because, you know, the SEC didn't have uh, any uh, minority coaches, you know, and then, you know, there's been an influx. And, and I, I hate to say this, but I think that, that to some extent it probably is because, um, you know, at one time, let's go like this. At one time, um, the guy at uh, Ole Miss, um, no, Bear Bryant didn't have black players. And then when he, you know, uh, got beat up by uh, USC and he said, well, hey, you know, we want, we're going to change this. You know, we're not going to do that. And, and in fact, I, I talked to my friend Pat Summit one time and uh, she was saying that um, she was pointing out specific coaches and she was saying that, you know, like those coaches weren't like – as sharp as they needed to be, but they're going to win because they have the talent. So with that said, um, then I guess the athletic directors and everybody else figured out, okay, long story short is let's, let's get some talent in here because, um, you know, as, as long as we got the talent, you know, we have a chance of winning. And so the SEC is loaded and they have a, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, minority coaches uh, but they they they're, they're, they have a lot of talent there as well, a lot of talent. I'm going to take one final question. Uh, we're going to go back to James Cratch. Hey, baby, I know uh, obviously everything's kind of changed with the coronavirus. Uh, you're going into the last year of your contract. I, I assume you want to come back next year. Do you expect that that'll kind of be taken care of uh, pretty soon? Yeah, yeah, it will. It will. Uh, Pat, Pat, uh, um, Pat is great. Sarah is great. Uh, I'm not worried about it at all. Um, no, I really am not worried about it. And yes, I'm com coming back. So we're gonna we're gonna do some great things. We're we're doing a lot of great things. I can promise you that. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank you so much, everyone who's.